Today, I'm going to guide a practice of uh, shamatha without support. So shamatha is this Sanskrit word we often define as uh, settling the mind or a calm abiding uh, practice. We can also just think of it as general meditative awareness that we're training um, in this muscle of awareness uh, that we naturally have, but doesn't necessarily naturally strengthen unless we meditate on it or work with it in meditation. So, um, as I said, shamatha without support is primarily for settling the mind and preparing it for some deeper practice in, practices in Buddhism, especially uh, Vipassana or insight practices. And so it's, it's, it's seen as not a means to an end, but um, within itself as a way to work with the mind, to familiarize with the mind, and also to be able to develop a sense of um, stillness, a uh, sense of being settled in the present moment, and then, of course, being able to touch deeper layers of mind. So there's many ways to present shamatha, and today we're going to work with it uh, basically through these three key points of, of what we would call the, the view of shamatha and sustaining those. And these three keys are uh, clear knowing or clarity, non-distraction, and uh, the third one is uh, presence or just being in the present moment, a sense of nowness. So nowness, I think, is not um, that much of a mystery. We all know what it's like to be in nowness, and we all know what it's like to be caught up in thought rumination and to be kicked into thinking about the future or dwelling on the past. So we just try to bring our mind, our attention back to a sense of nowness. The second one, uh, uh, non-distraction, this has to do with our natural sort of, um, I guess you could say, obstacle to settling the mind in shamatha practice, which is when we try to settle the mind, the mind doesn't want to be settled <laughs> and it wants to run everywhere and uh, plan everything or just think about cheese for, for an hour, you know, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. Um, the mind just does what it does and it does that habitually as, as we all know. And so um, non-distraction basically means we're recognizing when we're distracted, we're connecting back to awareness and settling the mind again. Uh, that's, that's really what it means. And then um, clarity, or sometimes we define um, the relative mind as clear and knowing. This doesn't mean that the meditation is clear necessarily or that, that our thinking is clear. Clarity has to do actually with a fundamental... Um, relative nature of mind, meaning that the mind itself is clear. So when, when, when thoughts and um, uh, ruminations and our disturbing emotions settle, we can start to touch base with the mind in its nature as being clear, right? And clear just means that it can reflect anything, just like a mirror can reflect anything that comes in the scope of the mirror, or like water, um, the limpidity of the water can reflect any color or object that, that swims in it or is or sitting in it. And so this is similar to our mind in that our mind in its, in its root nature is just clear and, and open, right? And so we can connect with that clarity through shamatha practice, but it's also part of the view of what we're sustaining in shamatha practice. So here what I recommend is not searching for like what clarity might look like according to like our ideas or asking, you know, reading lots of books. Um, it'll just become more evident the more we sit and the more we settle the mind because we won't be in thoughts. We're aware of nowness and clarity and slowly that, that, that clear aspect of mind, that quality of limpidity um, will we'll just be there. It's already there. It's not like something we have to bring in. It's already happening. It's just that normally um, our active thinking is covering it. So when our active thinking can settle, we can start to connect with it. Now, this doesn't mean that in shamatha uh, we need to be uh, pushing away or fighting thoughts. That's not really the practice. So we make a distinction here, and I get this question a lot. That's why I'm just going to say it now. We make a distinction between thinking and thoughts. So active thinking, we call distraction. Thoughts are not necessarily distraction, right? Because a thought can pop up. We can know it through awareness, and then it can dissolve, right? 
So that's what we're doing. We're simply watching our thoughts, allowing them to arise, allowing them to dissolve. But at the same time, we're not losing a sense of that, that fullness or clarity of mind and nowness. And all of this has to do with this quality of awareness that's watchful of this entire experience from moment to moment, right? So again, I'll start out our meditation just using a little bit of a, a tool I've found helpful and some others have found helpful to connect with awareness if you haven't already. And if you have, then you can just sort of go into your normal practice. And what's unique with shamatha without support to add to this practice is we don't necessarily um, have an, an object like the breath. Uh, we work we work with uh, the mind as it is. So so the clarity aspect kind of becomes a default object, but it's not really an object because it's just the mind resting in the moment, right, from moment to moment. So we call it objectless because there's not an anchor necessarily for the practice, like the breath or the body. So this can be challenging in the beginning. So I just recommend, you know, take it easy and do it in short moments. We don't have to try to hold awareness of nowness for long periods of time without an object. Just doing it even for a minute, a couple minutes at a time, then take a break and then come back in. And so I'll also guide it like that and prompt a little bit. Um, another aspect is, and we'll start to do this as we're starting the practice now. Another aspect is just leaving the senses untouched or basically unmodified. So with the eyes, we can leave them half open or fully open. You'll see me fully open. And <clears throat> with fully open, I'm not blocking, I'm not looking straight ahead. I'm not looking out to the sides. I'm just letting the eyes rest in full 180 degree vision. Whatever comes into my sense of smell, taste, touch, or um, hearing or sight, I'm just trying to allow it to be there. Just like I'm going to allow thoughts, but I'm not going to follow after thoughts, or I'm going to try my best. And when I do get caught in active thinking, I'm going to try to recognize that and just come back to nowness, come back to clarity and nowness. So it sounds like a lot, <laughs> but in practice, um, it starts to come together when we work with it. So just settle into the body in that way as a preliminary Relax into the feet, relax into your seat. Find a point in the body just initially to ground yourself. If that's the breath, that's fine. But then at some point, we'll let go of the breath as a grounding feature. And just practice for a moment with all the senses wide open. What's it like not to focus on your visual field, but it's there? What's it like not to focus on every single sound? Sound is there. Actually, sometimes when we just start our practice this way, actually we can click into shamatha without support pretty easily. But when we start to think about it and think, am I doing it right? Is this how, what I should be doing, etc.? We lose it. So just connect with the simplicity of this moment. Just the simplicity of the mind in that the mind can know and be aware. And we're just placing our awareness there. A sense of watchfulness, a sense of downness. And just before we start to go into the main body of our practice, generating a sense of warmth, love. And if you're a Buddhist practitioner, bodhicitta, the mind of awakening, that we wish ourselves and others to know our innate freedom. This is why we're practicing. From that sense of love, compassion, bodhicitta, we just allow the mind to rest, but we're not lost. We're also not focusing on anything in particular. We're just allowing ourselves to connect with awareness. And a tool for this, if you're struggling to connect with awareness, <clears throat> take a moment to focus on something, choose something, be it the breath, maybe something you're looking at in front of you, or a feeling in the body, a, a sense of the feet touching the ground, just some point that you can bring your attention to for a moment. And this is uh, just an exercise I found helpful 
for people who are struggling to connect with awareness itself. So bring the majority of your attention to that object, breath, body, sound, whatever it is, something you're looking at. Once the majority of your attention is there and resting there, now we take a step back into the layer of the one who's knowing that, into the layer of the mind where we can know that we're knowing that particular object. So let's say it's the breath. We're paying attention to breath, but then awareness can also know that it's paying attention to breath. So see how that move feels or looks for you, moving from focus and concentration back into awareness without losing attention. Attention is actually a part of awareness. I'll try that for a moment. And when you connect with that sense of knowing that you're present, knowing that you're paying attention, just drop the object, drop the breath, drop sound. Just let everything arise and fall as it is and rest in the moment with awareness. Open, not blocking, not seeking, but there is a gentle effort. There is gentle mindfulness, sustaining the practice, connected to nowness, non-distraction, resting in the clarity of mind. We don't have to hold this with a heavy hand, hold it lightly, gently, in a relaxed way, but not so relaxed that we lose awareness. as I said, if we take out the goal that we need to sustain some kind of focused concentration for long periods, and instead we make the objective of connecting to awareness and sustaining that, we can let go that we need to be in this sort of consistent process of awareness. I mean, that's wonderful if you can, and we can build into that. But it's also okay if we just need to re-recognize awareness every few minutes. This is a way to practice with shamatha without support in short moments many times, because when we do short moments many times, there's less of a chance we're gonna be spaced out and spend the majority of the practice just lost in distraction. So we kind of refresh the practice as needed. There's no state to chase. There's no special experience to chase. Just let yourself relax into clarity, non-distraction, and nowness with awareness. The defining character of shamatha in this case is, are we resting with awareness or not?
as you need, fresh awareness. Almost like we can give ourselves permission to start the meditation again and again and again throughout the practice. I find this to be a very healthy way to cultivate awareness. Of course, over time, we'll be able to sit for longer periods with awareness. But it's okay to break it up. Just in our last minute or so of practice. Refreshing. Just let go into awareness, trust that you can just be with mind in this moment as it is. My recommendation is to try to stop making it into something it's not be that a perfect meditation or following after a train of thoughts. Just be with life as it is right now. And we're aware awareness can host all of that. Everything can move through awareness. And just before we close the practice, we're going to seal it back with that sense of love, warmth, compassion, if you'd like, bodhicitta. Again, you can just flash a thought of warmth for yourself and others, wishing others well, wishing them happiness and freedom from dissatisfaction and its causes. And the bodhicitta wish is adding on to that an altruistic intention, intention that I will, uh, I will practice, I will live my life to bring that about myself and others. I wish to attain awakening for the benefit of others. And so we seal the practice with that. This can be felt after you flash the thought, just rest back with the body. Feel that sense of confidence in your intention. No matter how long that process is going to take, you're going to show up for it again and again. And um, if you chose to open your eyes fully, just begin to move the body a little bit at the close of practice. Look around the room and try to stay with awareness. This is an excellent exercise. So we start to blur the line between formal meditation and informal meditation. Often we sometimes get obsessed with formal meditation, but actually we need to be integrating this throughout our day. Most of us you know, don't have tons and tons of time to do formal meditation. So just see what it's like to be open aware in a sense of nowness while you're moving or looking around. Okay, thanks everyone for your practice. I appreciate it.